Before we get started, um, can we get a bit of commotion for the earrings? <laughs> oh, man. I just knocked them on my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi, my lovelies, and welcome back to my channel. So, if you've been online at all recently, you might have witnessed Trolls taking the world by storm with their third film, Trolls Band Together. However, Trolls isn't anything new, with the first film being developed as early as 2010 and the first movie actually releasing in 2016. And as Trolls has kind of risen in popularity over the years, there's been a running theme of a kind of unnecessary hate train online. So in 2023 or 2024, it's been kind of cool to witness the movie finally be given its flowers. But to me, Trolls has kind of always had its charm, because Trolls is so much more than the movies. It comes from humble beginnings. It has lived three lives over the past 65 years. So that's what we're going to dive into in today's video. We are going to be discussing the evolution of trolls from the troll dolls that started it all to the forgotten troll the with the with the Z and DreamWorks trolls who's really truly helped the legacy of the original troll dolls be able to continue and live on for new generations. I would like to thank this commenter right here for suggesting this video, although it's definitely been suggested throughout my Google form too, but because I almost have 500 submissions now, things get lost unfortunately. If I found any of the other submissions, they will obviously be on screen. But thank you to everyone who did suggest this video, it was super fun to look into. But you know who else I want to thank? The sponsor of today's video, FlexiSpot. You guys know how important my space is to me. I mean, my room stands out a lot in the background of my videos. I'm actually in the process of organizing and deep cleaning at the moment, and that's why I'm so glad that FlexiSpot was able to actually help me out with something my room has always lacked, a desk. I use this MacBook Pro to edit all my videos, and because of its portability and that makes it so I can work anywhere, I've always just prioritized having an area for my makeup and my jewelry over a desk to work at. However, thanks to the special L shape that offers a spacious working environment so that you can have multiple devices, you can call me Hannah Montana because now I can have the best of both worlds. No joke before this, I was literally putting my computer on the floor at night because I just had nowhere to put it, and that made me feel pretty uneasy because it's prone to getting stepped on. and usually I would resort to editing on my bed in the same corner that I actually film my videos. But let's just say my back was really starting to suffer the consequences of my own actions. That's why the fact that this desk is actually a standing desk is by far my favorite feature. Just watch. And just like that, the dual motors make adjusting height stable and quiet. For reference, I'm actually 4'11", so if you think this is tall, <laughs> just you wait. I haven't actually seen how high this can go yet. <laughs> and just like that, wow, I can even stop overworking myself. But if you're not short like me, thanks to this handy dandy panel right here, you can actually set a timer for yourself. There's also a USB charging port, which is so useful considering how much I airdrop photos or videos from my phone to my MacBook while editing. Thank you so much again to FlexiSpot. Be sure to use the link in my description if you want to upgrade your working space today. And now back to trolls. Not to be yapping in the intro, but I did want to clarify real quick, I'm going to be referring to the damn company as such throughout this whole video, because while doing my research, the company was actually referred to as like three different things, either the damn company, troll co, or damn things, when in reality, the creator Thomas Dam maintained ownership of the trolls brand even after he died with his family taking over that ownership until 2013 when they did their partnership with DreamWorks. But even then, they still have partly ownership and we'll get into that later in the video. My point is, to make things less confusing, I'm just sticking to one name for the company. Also, yes, troll dolls under the name Russ are authentic because Russ Berry is the company the dolls were licensed under in the US, so they were also known as Russ Troll Dolls too. But now that that is all out of the way, without further ado, let's get into it. The origin story of trolls is actually very interesting. They've been around as long as the 1950s and originated from Denmark in a small town called Joel. Trolls were created by a man named Thomas Dam, whose wife ended up encouraging him to begin selling his figurines, aka the troll dolls. And the troll dolls were actually something he made in a time of distress. See, Thomas previously was a baker, and after World War II, the factory that was supplying Thomas with flour that he needed to like run his bakery ended up closing. So naturally after this, uh, money became very tight and he was bankrupt. And for a while, Thomas actually had to resort to shoving 
shoveling snow to make some cash while he tried to figure out how he could make a new living. At some point during this time, Thomas would kind of start to develop a bit of a routine where he carved leftover firewood by the fire, which turned into him, you know, carving things for his kids, often like silly creatures to make them laugh during this, you know, hardship that they were having. That's where his wife actually took notice and decided to encourage Dam to start selling his wooden creations. So he did just that. Originally, Thomas went door to door selling his wooden dolls, traveling specifically to the city of Aalborg. And well, it worked. This was an extreme success and the dolls actually began to sell out. Because of this kind of newfound fan base in Aalborg, this also gave Thomas, you know, some other work opportunities on a bigger scale. The infamous one being in 1956 when he was actually commissioned by a Swedish department store to make a sculpture of Santa Claus. However, when Thomas realized the sculpture wasn't going to be visible from the street, he suggested making a window display for the store. And to accompany his Santa, he ended up deciding to carve some little Christmas elves. And it was this little change that would change Thomas's life forever. This display ended up being a huge hit with the customers. And it was so much so that people began to request dolls of their own. And so this is where the damn company kind of began. The demand became like just way too much for Thomas on his own to manage. So Thomas ended up opening a factory to, you know, manufacture the dolls back in Joel where he lived. And with this big change, Thomas would also decide to do some little modifications for the designs. So like, for example, instead of being carved from wood, they would actually be rubber and then have wood shavings stuffed bodies. Although that didn't really last too long, the Troll Dolls designs would actually be switched to being made with PVC plastic by 1961. And shortly following this, Trolls pretty much took the world by storm, being an international success, and they specifically became known for their good luck all around the world. This is because, fun fact, Thomas himself originally called them good luck trolls, which comes from old Scandinavian folklore. But after this point, throughout the 60s to about the 90s, the trolls craze had just an absolute chokehold on Americans everywhere, coming in and out of popularity throughout these years. But even with coming in and out of popularity, they ultimately had a dedicated fan base. There are many types of troll dolls. We have our standard ones, of course, but also mini troll dolls, which are twice as small as the regulars. And then we have the even bigger troll dolls, which are kind of like, I would say baby doll size. It's kind of hard because like, I obviously haven't seen one in person. I don't know why, but the first baby doll that came into my head to like compare them to was Baby Alive, but they're probably more similar to like Cabbage Patch Kids maybe? I don't know if they had plastic or stuffed bodies, but it would make sense for them to have stuffed bodies. I feel like it was pretty common practice around this time. I feel like it's more like the newer baby dolls that have that like plastic body. Anyway, my favorite thing about the troll dolls, and I feel like part of like their appeal, is they come in so many like fun different outfits. I know that's always what made them stand out to me. And like, I'm sorry, okay, troll dolls kind of walked so those sunny angels could run. Like, I'm sorry, I can't get into it. They're a little creepy to me, but after buying, you know, troll doll of my own, I, I kind of get the appeal now. Like, how could you not be obsessed with this? And yes, I did buy this just for the video. So that kind of explains like my um, whole getup. I tried to do something fun because I'm like, if I'm going to do a Trolls video, I need a fun hat. But yeah, Sunny Angels are kind of creepy to me. But like, if you collect them, I definitely get it because I collect so many little things like that. And I just think they're so silly. I just made the comparison because like, I don't know, like they're low key kind of similar. But yeah, Troll Dolls were one of the biggest toy fads probably ever, and it's to the point that they've had their moments throughout pop culture. So we're going to discuss a few today. You know me and my niche references, I had to look into this. For example, I would say like the most well-known one is Toy Story. There's a troll doll that sports a blue bikini with daisies on it, and the troll appears in movies one, two, and three. And if you didn't notice this, I wouldn't blame you because this troll doll doesn't actually belong to Andy, who's, you know, the main character, but actually his little sister, Molly. Now I should have worded that differently. I said the troll appears in movies one, two and three, but that's not exactly the case. I already had enough media to consume for this video, so no, I didn't have a Toy Story marathon. I mentioned me not rewatching Toy Story because I can't remember if the troll was actually in the second movie. However, from what I was able to find, she was definitely in uh, the first Toy Story, but canonically, it's suspected that the troll doll was sold in between movies two and three. I can't confirm anything about Toy Story 4, I've never seen it, and apparently they're making a fit. Uh... This might be controversial, but why? Good movie trilogy. I loved it, but did we really even need a fourth? I just thought the franchise like concluded perfectly by like Andy kind of passing on the torch with his beloved toys to Bonnie. And then I think there was like a series of like shorts that they did too, so they could still expand upon it and they did, but 
I don't know. I just, I don't, I, I just haven't touched it because like, I don't really know what's going on anymore. Moving on though, trolls have made various cameos in other animated shows. Like for example, episode seven of season seven of The Simpsons titled Bart's Girlfriend. There's a scene where Bart is at church and he pulls out his troll doll and he starts singing. Troll man. Do -do 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 -do. I'm a troll. <laughs> then Marge ends up taking it from him and, you know, complaining about the doll's crazy hair. I think this is the joke, but either way, I love the choice how they made the troll doll have blue hair and then Marge is like kind of known for her infamous tall hair. I don't want you playing with something that has such bizarre hair. Awful, awful hair. Another one is, I believe this isn't a specific episode, correct me if I'm wrong, but in King of the Hill, Bobby Hill actually has a whole troll doll collection. Troll action figures. Of like his own. Welcome to the Bobby Hill room. No flash photography on the trolls, please. Which is shown in his bedroom in the show. And I've never seen King of the Hill, mostly because like I used to be terrified of the intro for some reason. I talked about that in my childhood trauma video. However, I keep seeing clips of specifically Bobby Hill online and I love him just based off of that. Like I think I'm actually missing out by not watching a full episode. It's okay. It's okay, babies. Daddy's here. But by far the most uncanny cameo of all has to be that canonically, with my two own eyes, I can see what Peter Griffin would look like as a troll doll. I wish I was kidding, okay? In episode 21 of season three of Family Guy, a sentence I thought I would never say on this channel, the family finds a truck of toxic waste in their front yard, which Chris ends up opening, so they all get exposed to toxic waste, but um, getting exposed to toxic waste actually causes the whole family to get superpowers from the nuclear waste. So like Stewie is like Olive from Ant Farm, Brian has super speed, Chris can conjure fire, Lois has super strength, Meg has claws? And you know what Peter can do? I'm never going to be able to get this picture out of my head. Oh, also funny thing, you know that picture of Lois as a baby that like Twitter became obsessed with for like a week a while back? Oh, you don't have a chronic Twitter addiction? Anyway, yeah, that was from this episode too. There was like multiple stories in the episode. I did not watch the whole thing. I did not have time for that. The one Troll Dolls reference that I remember the most though is from Robot Chicken, which despite being terrified of the King of the Hill intro, since like that was always what would come on right after like Cartoon Network switched from Cartoon Network to Adult Swim, and I think that's why I was so scared. Anyway, um, I was obsessed with Robot Chicken, which I think is because of how similar it is in style to Mad, and saying I was obsessed with Mad was an understatement, which might be weird because a lot of kids were scared of Mad, but no, I was obsessed. If you aren't familiar with both of these, what they have in common is these shows actually like parody things. For example, my favorite character from Robot Chicken, Bitch Pudding, is a like strawberry shortcake parody. I also remember that one episode where like all the Bratz dolls just get murdered by Draculaura. That is getting off topic. That's getting off topic. Basically in season two of episode 10, there was this bit where a treasure troll, the ones that have like the stone, goes on a date with another troll who's just a regular troll and doesn't have like the gemstone, but she drugs him and she steals his belly jewel. Oh, and he finds out he has trades, which is aids for trolls. This is one of the few times I watched this show and I was like, yeah, I really shouldn't be watching this, should I? Cause even now, I, I, what is the joke? Like, I don't know what the joke is here. Like I genuinely got so excited to see there was a robot chicken reference. Then I was just like, oh, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about that annoying orange webisode. It was called Trollin', where the annoying orange has a run-in with some troll dolls. And if you think you're the biggest annoying orange hater out there, try again. You haven't met these guys, have you? Or should I say these trolls? The premise of the episode is they think all his jokes are lame. They also hate Marshmallow too, which is pushing it way too far. You can diss that annoying orange all you like, but leave Marshmallow out of this. Oh, and fun fact, Marshmallow is canonically non-binary. Anyway, Marshmallow actually ends up setting one of them on fire using a magnifying glass. However, these boneheads- Hey, I'm not a bonehead. Stop calling me that. Insist that their friend that's being burned alive before their eyes uh... is photoshopped? And while he's burning, he continues to call him lame. That is so fake. Totally photoshopped. Let me on fire so lame! That's such a commitment to being a hater. 
However, there are no survivors in this episode. Shortly after that, a dog jumps up on the counter and eats the remaining trolls. I know that was technically the last one, but the last one I'm gonna talk about isn't actually from a show, but it's something really cool that happened in history. In the 60s, at the height of trolls' popularity, Betty Miller would make history becoming the first female pilot to fly solo across the Pacific Ocean. Although she flew solo, she wasn't totally alone though. Her only companion on the flight was her troll doll named Dammit. Dammit was gifted to her by her husband as a good luck charm, as you know the trolls were known for. And he really was. Naturally, after completing this flight, Betty would receive a lot of press attention, and with that definitely came its critics because of the time, you know, we were in. So to kind of deflect from this sort of thing, she would actually bring the troll along with her, since in fact they did go on the journey together after all. During February of last year, the troll doll was actually available for viewing at the Los Angeles County Art Museum. By far the coolest piece of information I found out about trolls. Like the fact that a troll had a hand in like making history and was a part of history as it was actively being made, but I couldn't find anywhere where Damn It is in 2024. Anyway, now that we've dived into their impact a bit with the amount of success that this fad received, it shouldn't come to a surprise that, you know, the troll dolls saw their fair share of copycats finding their way onto shelves. You would think, oh, well, they sued their asses, didn't they? Well, um, no. It was not as easy as it sounds. It wouldn't actually be until 2003 that the damn company would get copyright restored in the United States under the Uruguay Round Agreements Act. Although Dam had obtained the US copyright status back in 1965, because they started selling the troll dolls in the US without the proper copyright notice, the copyright would end up being invalidated the same year, which is what caused troll dolls to enter public domain. Because of this, companies like You Need a Doll Company got away with making millions off the trolls craze. I point out specifically You Need a Doll because their manager had actually been meeting with like the Dam company's president and informed the president they had no intentions of selling any more troll dolls ever again. However, that was a lie. Despite what You Need a Doll said, they had been in talks to sell their new Wish Nick dolls at Walmart. And when Dam caught wind of this in 2005, as funny enough, they were preparing to relaunch the troll dolls, you best believe they took them to court. And in 2007, when this case concluded, the court ended up siding fully with them, stating that these Wishnik dolls were infringing on their copyright and caused a threat to the troll dolls. With that, You Need a Doll Company was ordered to no longer distribute their troll dolls for the foreseeable future. Wow, thank God we're done with lawsuits now, right? Right? Um, well, boy, do I have some news for you. We've officially reached the next era of trolls, aka trolls with a Z. <laughs> As I said, a comeback was in the works for trolls during that same time that the You Need a Doll lawsuit was first filed. That comeback was trolls. I'm not gonna say it like that the whole time, I just wanted to make it clear. Which DIC Entertainment launched in 2005 after they acquired the license from the Dam Company to, again, help troll dolls have a comeback, but also rebrand them for a modern audience to hopefully see some kind of a resurgence in popularity, but also to see their legacy, you know, live on after all these years. Trolls, the TV show, would make its official debut on October 3rd of 2005, and it follows the adventures of five teenage girls who are named after after gemstones and call themselves best friends for life, which is also the title of the first episode. What a coincidence! Anyway, our five main characters included Ruby, Amethyst, Sapphire, Topaz, and Onyx. I have to say, despite everything that happened, I do think these character designs are fucking sick. Especially Onyx and Ruby. Oh my god, the spiked hair and then the outfit I would totally wear. Anytime I talk about a TV show on this channel, I feel like I always have like the same generic line of And I have to say, this song is a banger. One thing about me, I love a good theme song for a TV show, uh, but this one... It's a bit conflicting. At first I was totally jamming out to it like it's a I have in my script heavy metal headbang, but I really didn't want to like destroy this. So just imagine I was going way harder than that. But then do you guys know when you're listening to a song and you start to kind of like hyper focus, I guess, on the actual lyrics of the song instead of like listening to the song for a moment? Yeah, well, I did that. Um, I was really starting to listen to the lyrics and uh? this theme song is kind of ridiculous. Um, it kind of sounds like they put things girls enjoy 
into an AI generator. Though I will give them credit where it's due, we conquer evil and then go shopping? Um, sounds like friendship goals if you guys ask me. But the writer's room for this show went a little something like this. Hmm, what do girls like? Oh, oh, I know. Give it to me, go. Oh, uh, um, they charge they spell phone? Eat hot chip? and lie. Yo, someone start writing this shit down. My favorite part though has to be when they just say, generation, why not have fun? Generation, why not have fun? What? <laughs> Did I miss a line of the song or something? Cause what does that even mean? Back to the toy side of things though, to go along with the show, fashion dolls of the main characters were released. And I don't know like how we lost the plot, but like I, my body had a reaction. I physically jumped seeing what these looked like for the first time. People call troll dolls like scary, but those faces are just so unnerving. At first I was gonna make a joke about how they looked like the Keebler elf on drugs, but then I Googled to like refresh my memory about what the Keebler elf looked like. And then it kind of helped me calm down. So it's safe to say when I found out these were produced by Hasbro, um, it all kind of made sense. And I thought the Equestria girls were bad. <laughs> okay, that was not a diss. Well, well yes. <laughs> it kind of was. Just the dolls, not the Equestria girls as a whole. They had potential to be good. It's really just the clothes. Like, I'm sorry, they were cheaply made. If you don't believe me, Google it right now. Look at their outfit. The more could have been done. Now that we've discussed kind of the basics of this Trolls with a Z era, um, guess how many seasons this show had? Guess, I'll wait. If you guessed one season, you'd be correct. Yeah, this show was almost like single-handedly responsible for the demise of DIC Entertainment just three years later in 2008 because they truly expected this show to be like a massive, massive hit due to the amount of success that Trolls had achieved. With that being said, they invested a lot into this project. Like they had extremely high hopes and they expected to get what they invested into the project back. But the exact opposite would happen. Um, it caused them a $2.3 million loss to be exact because of just how low the consumerism rates were. Quick interruption here. I have been looking for the source of where I read this. For at least 10 hours now, I've searched my entire computer's history and I cannot find it. And it's actually driving me nuts because I remember finding it and I was like, wow, this is really helpful. So long story short, I found a new source that estimates it's uh, 2 million to 4 million. So this is definitely an accurate um, number, very more specific right in the middle of, you know, what the estimate was. But I just want to make that clear because usually the source would be on screen and I'm like, S I don't even know how this happened. This video just took a lot more in-depth research and clearly I lost the source somehow. Don't ask me how that's possible. I don't know, I'm like baffled. So you know what DIC did to solve this problem? They sued the damn company? Oh yes, it's totally their fault that your concept failed. In October of 2007, it was announced that DIC would be suing Dam for $20 million. However, about a week later, Dam would actually counter sue DIC for financially misrepresenting itself and destroying the marketability and goodwill of troll dolls in the process. To get a better idea of the situation and Dam's perspective, I'm gonna quote Ellie Gomista's uh, article on the situation titled, Lawsuit Charges Fraud in Deals for Iconic Troll Dolls. According to the complaint, when it began its urgent pursuit of licensing rights to the troll character in 2003, DIC held itself as one of the largest and most successful animation companies in the world. Asked by the troll company if it had the financial wherewithal to support a successful and global relaunch of the Good Luck Troll character. DIC proclaimed that it had sufficient financial resources and that money would be no problem. In fact, the complaint states that DIC chairman personally assured troll company president that DIC had all the money it needed to restore the troll to its former glory. Billions of dollars of Good Luck Trolls have been sold in decades past, but because of copyright difficulties, most of the profits went to others. The complaint alleges when DIC made its approach, Troll Company was just completing its long legal battle to regain sole ownership of Troll in the United States. Finally poised to reap the benefits of its famous character, Troll Company was approached by several different companies keen on relaunching the Troll. Hayward and others convinced Troll Company that DIC would be the best choice. 
but their concealment of DIC's money problems led to the troll company once again being denied of its long overdue rewards. Honestly, it's hilarious to me that DIC thought just because their rebrand of the Trolls Dolls brand failed that they were just gonna get back all of the profit they lost by suing Dam. I almost feel like that's the stupidest thing they could have done and that probably made just things so much worse. And that pretty much concludes this era of trolls -za. Before we move on though, I did want to mention one more thing about this TV show that was really interesting. The fact that this show started with a movie? On August 27th of 2005, episode 1, Best Friends for Life, would premiere as an animated feature movie on both Disney Channel and Toon Disney. Although Toon Disney, it didn't air on there until September. But again, August 27th, so that's like the end of August, so pretty soon after. And this was before, you know, that August 3rd date uh, where the series began airing on DIC Kids, you know, later in October. So with that discovery, I just became really curious if this was just episodes of the TV show combined or included extra content or was something completely different that we hadn't seen. Luckily, I did find my answer though, but unfortunately, it was on the Lost Media Wiki. The series was far formatted into nine story arcs, each making up three episodes. While the episodic versions can be easily found anywhere, the feature-length versions, which were produced exclusively for DVD and contained extra wraparound footage that the episodic versions did not feature, are very difficult to come across. So for example, uh, the first two movies, Best Friends for Life and The Magic Five, were made up of episodes 1, 2, and 3. Also known as arcs 1, 2, and 3. Uh, that's how it's detailed on the wiki, but I'm just gonna say episodes because it's easier. But by arcs, it means like the story arcs that happened within those episodes. And then for the second movie, The Magic of Five, it was episodes 4 through 6. So basically three episodes each per movie. And a promo featured in both bonus features of both of these movies actually confirmed that not only were the next two releases called Hair Over Heels and You Glow Girls, but that we could expect a release in March of 2006. However, as OP details, the date came and went and there was no release or confirmation of a cancellation even. And me and OP share the same opinion of, you know, that this was likely due to poor sales for not just the DVDs, but the Trolls brand as a whole. But luckily, and Circle Entertainment did end up securing the rights to the property and was able to release the previously canceled Head Over Heels on DVD. With that, and Circle would also announce they'd be releasing the, you know, You Glow Girls movie, but also a unannounced movie called A Hair A Fair. However, these would actually never come to fruition, being delayed in June 2008 and then delayed again to an unknown date in 2009 before just outright being canceled altogether. And as of now, everything is really lost. Like only the first three movies that saw the official releases have been found. However, You Glow Girls is partially found. The version that's been found of the movie is a Dutch dub, so it hasn't been found in American yet, but it's definitely progress. But yeah, the way they went about uh, releasing this show is definitely interesting to say the least. However, I truly hope these get found. Um, I wanted to just shine some light on it while we're here because I found it really interesting. Definitely check your DVDs, folks, if you were an avid Trolls fan. Let me know in the comments if you've seen these like movie versions of the you know troll show and do they really differ that much from the show? I'm actually very curious. But yeah, ultimately after this whole fiasco, the trolls brand kind of really went quiet the next couple of years. And in 2012, we would see the very last original troll dolls release. I just want to clarify, while this is very much still the last like trolls release through the damn company, they did actually do a collab with MAC Cosmetics to celebrate the release of the first Trolls film in 2016 where they show like the original Troll Dolls in the commercial and I'm pretty sure the line is also based off those Troll Dolls. So technically there was one more, but you know what I mean. The damn company had partnered with Dark Horse Comics to basically release this set of colorful blind bags, though from what I was able to find, this release is actually not very widely known about due to its very short run, which happened because the damn company at the very same time was in talks with DreamWorks and they were getting that all sorted out. Despite that, the second series of these blind bags would still be released in 2013. With that being said, as you can tell, we've officially reached our next and current era of trolls. See, in 2008, after the um, absolute dumpster fire that was the Trolls rebrand with a Z, DreamWorks, the people behind the iconic Shrek franchise, began to show a huge interest in this IP and began filing, you know, several trademarks. During this very same time, the damn company had kind of been looking for 
a Hollywood movie company to help them produce a film in an attempt to kind of salvage the brand after the failure of Trolls. And although there was a ton of interest in taking on this project, they did end up going with DreamWorks, and as of spring of 2013, they do officially own the rights to Trolls. Originally, like DIC, they were going to acquire a licensing to produce a film. That's why in 2010, the movie was actually announced, despite, you know, they hadn't bought it yet. However, other events happened in between this uh, that ended up causing DreamWorks to just get the entire rights for Trolls. Well, not the entire rights, uh, you know, the rights for Trolls everywhere except Scandinavia. And I say other events because I could not find like a straight exact reasoning for why this decision was made, but it's pretty clear it was for the best and DreamWorks was the perfect candidate. Like I said, in 2010 the movie was announced with a coming soon article titled DreamWorks Animation Plans Good Luck Trolls Film. And I mention this article because in it we hear from Neil Stam, who is the son of Thomas. My father would have been very happy to know that his troll has found its dream partner in DreamWorks Animation, said Neil Stam who now owns the family business. We are thrilled at the creative possibilities we have in bringing the trolls to family audiences around the world across a number of channels, including on the big screen. DreamWorks Animation Head of Development Alex Schwartz said, We look forward to working alongside Damn Things to build on the mythology of good luck trolls while delivering the sense of adventure, heart, and comedy that DreamWorks Animation is known for. Happily ever after, no Shrek pun intended. I'm so happy that the Damn family was, you know, able to give this beloved toy the happy ending it deserved. And now it can truly have its legacy live on for a whole new generation. And it definitely has. Even when the trolls hate train was going on online, kids, it was a huge hit with kids. And I feel like with each film, it's kind of expanded to, you know, it is a family movie at the end of the day. Anyone can enjoy trolls. And speaking of uh, expanding the universe of trolls, uh, we wouldn't see the release of the first film until 2016, which was titled simply Trolls. And the story goes, once upon a time in a happy forest, in the happiest tree lived the happiest creatures the world has ever known, aka trolls. Trolls loved nothing more than to sing, dance, and hug. Well, until one day when the trolls were discovered by the Bergens. Bergens are basically these like the most miserable creatures in the land. They're horrible. Horrible because they saw how happy the trolls were and they wanted that for the themselves so badly that they thought, why don't we eat the trolls to kind of fill that void? So with that, a tradition began where once a year the Bergens would gather around the troll tree and have an annual feast of happiness. And the holiday was deemed Trollstice. And it's embedded deep in like the Bergens culture that, you know, you cannot be happy if you haven't eaten a troll. Which is like really fucking sad because as Poppy goes on to say, you know, happiness is inside of you. And it has nothing to do with like slaughtering trolls. <laughs> and as I mentioned, Poppy, our main characters in the film are two trolls named Poppy, who will later be known as Queen Poppy, and Branch. And just by looking at them, they are complete total opposites, which is, you know, really hinted at again throughout the movies as they, you know, develop as characters. And as we can see of the designs of trolls in general in this DreamWorks world, we can tell they have a completely different design than the original trolls. And uh, obviously the trolls girls who are literally humans? <laughs> kind of, not really. I didn't watch the show, so that's probably wrong. But either way, they are the most drastically different looking out of the three eras. However, what I did love is at the beginning of Trolls 1, they do reference the classic trolls. They make an appearance! As the trolls are making their escape from the troll tree on Trollstice, they put these like dummies in the tree so they, you know, the Bergens don't suspect that they've escaped. And the dummies are just a bunch of troll dolls and they all come falling out of the tree. Now obviously the plot I just told you guys about is just the first film or it's specific to that film. As of 2024 there is actually three movies with the most recent being Trolls Band Together which released in theaters this past December and then Trolls World Tour which was released in 2020. Something that shocks people so much about this movie trilogy is like all the like celebrity voices within it. To me I've just always known that but I'll see like a, a TikTok every once in a while where someone's like, no way Anna Kendrick is Poppy? Did you watch Pitch Perfect? Cause she sings in Trolls, it should be pretty obvious, like shouldn't it? Something interesting I wanted to bring up was, you know, how the movie has been in development since around 2010. Uh, well, the casting was originally totally different, which is to be expected of something that's gone through a lot of changes in development. We all know Anna Kendrick as Queen Poppy now, but originally she was gonna be voiced by Chloe Grace Moretz, and then Branch was gonna be voiced by Jason Schwartzman. I know that's already crazy to think about, but this one, this next one, this next one takes the cake. Tim Hill, the director of Alvin and the Chipmunks, 
was also set to direct this movie. That is just wild. Obviously that didn't end up happening. Um, all three films have been directed by Walt Dorn and uh, Mike Mitchell, but uh, the possibilities. Alvin and the Chipmunks, those are some camp movies. We could have had a whole different vibe to the movie, like just by that alone. Enough of my yapping though. Now that we have some background on Trolls though, I did in fact watch all three Trolls movies in preparation for this video, which I do have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed. Prior to binging all the movies, I'd initially only seen the 2016 Trolls, but I remembered nothing beyond because singing kill my grandma, okay? okay. My, my uncle, uncle broke his neck tap dancing once. once. That scene, I'm sorry, that's always gonna get me. <laughs> that is so wild out of context. Anyway, yeah, this was long overdue for me. Uh, especially because this past winter, with when the third movie released, it was everywhere. I could not escape it. Like, I had debated making an unhinged recap of Trolls. It never happened because this was right around New Year's and I spent New Year's sick. So I ended up just watching the new Chicken Run instead and then passing out. But because I had that plan, I kept skipping all those TikToks of slime subway surfers split screen clips of the movie. <laughs> and I succeeded. I've seen no spoilers, which is kind of crazy because it was, you know, impossible to dodge. Although I have seen the clip of Velvet and Veneer admitting they were frauds. I didn't watch the whole thing. I was scrolling and it just started playing and I heard it and you know, it's kind of expected. I was kind of expecting something like that. Well, when I saw that, I didn't really know the context of like what they did as villains or anything. I just knew they were serving some cunt. I mean, Mount Rages? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? The way the vocals in that song scratched my brain. I know there's gonna be that one person that gets mad and they're like, well, that song's a cover. That's like half the songs in Trolls. I, have to, I need to break it to you. But yeah, when this was all going down, I couldn't tell you what was happening in this movie, but I was eating up those velvet veneer cosplays, that's for sure. Anyway, with Trolls increasing in popularity, I'd gotten suggestions to cover the history of the toys pre-DreamWorks, which was right up my alley, but I was kind of left with the question of like, how would I even go about covering present day Trolls? Because it's so much more than the toys because the movie ties along to them. There's just an insane amount of lore to explore. Do we uh, understand what I'm getting at here? I knew when I saw a fellow nostalgia YouTuber, Athena P, diving into the world of trolls herself, or should I say, trollza and trolls, but not trolls. I had to bring in the lore expert or the newly established trolls expert. Why are we still here? Cut to the call. Hi, I'm here with Athena P and we're gonna talk about trolls. Um, I just finished binge watching all three of the movies. I watched this, the first and the second one back to back. And then last night after I like filmed the footage you guys will be watching now, I forgot to watch the third one. So I watched it at like 12 a.m. But honestly, it was really good. So I was just like having a great time. I saw your ranking on Twitter and I totally agree. Thank you. People were like, I'm disappointed. I'm like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> People love the second one. Me personally, not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, my like favorite. it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong, but like I, the stakes Here's were just like two. making me nervous. And especially, yeah, the stakes. Because I was watching and I was like, I'm like, I cannot believe that at the end she's just singing a song along with all of them. I'm like, where's... <laughs> right? And then when she, when she like smashed the guitar, I was like so distraught. I was like, what's going on? I, it still was pretty good. I don't think there's any bad Trolls movies, but like, I yeah, oh, no. I saw, I was really, I had high hopes for that one because it seemed like everyone collectively really liked that one the yeah. most. Is your favorite movie the third or is it the first? I keep going back and forth. That's so my thing. Things, there's so many things I like about both of them because as far as like the core group goes, the first movie, like it establishes their characters so well. Okay, the animation in the third one, I was like so shocked because I had just seen the second and then I'm like, this is completely like, it revamped. Like it reminded me a bit of like, you know, Puss in Boots, which is also DreamWorks. Yes. And the animation in that movie is crazy. Like people don't give it enough credit. I think just for the animation and the music, I had to say that that was my favorite, but I also really, it's like tied with the first one because like it establishes everything really well. The first one was like the most like cut and dry story. Like they played it the safest, but it was good for establishing the characters. I didn't expect to like the first one that much. I don't know why, but it was really good. And then by the third movie, it was just fucking hilarious. It was like, yeah, we got 
how many secret siblings? Five secret siblings? I'm like, that was ambitious. I know, they just like, <laughs> I did not see that coming at all. Well, I mean, I knew that Poppy had a sister because I had seen people talk about her sister, but I didn't, I was like, Oh, she really does have a secret sister, like, that's so funny. When I watch kids movies or, like, new kids movie franchises, I feel like sometimes the jokes are, like, kind of cringy. In this series, I feel like there's, like, there, I haven't really cringed. Like, there was yeah, maybe solid. one joke which was like they were going into like that um it's like a mini golf place and then like mm -hmm. i'm forgetting the name of uh the, the guy which is kind of ironic the leader of brozone he was like this reminds me of that true crime podcast Eve, i think this is the place from every true crime podcast i've ever listened to i missed that oh my god that's so weird i was kind of shocked that's that so joke would be in this movie <laughs> Yeah, like, the third movie, it was, like, like you said with, uh, this movie and Puss in Boots, like, DreamWorks is pulling out all the stops. Literally, yeah. And, they don't give, people this, don't give DreamWorks enough credit. And with how much, like, Disney has been falling flat recently, at least according to, like, critics' reviews, I've been, I haven't, I haven't went out to see Wish yet, but I heard it was not worth it. Oh my and, god, I saw, like, the spoiler of, like, the ending, I'm forgetting what it was now, and it literally sounded, like, AI-generated. Oh, jeez. And I think that, like, DreamWorks... Like, because they're still, I don't know about like establishing themselves, but they still have something to prove. They have like that underdog in them. <laughs> they're giving it their all. Like, I'm excited to see the next Shrek if that ever comes out. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited for that. And I heard on Twitter that like Shrek 2 is gonna go into theaters again, like for the anniversary. And I was like, I need to go. I have to go. Uh, oh wait, before we move on to original trolls, I wanted, okay, I wanted to kind of talk about like the lore of it, I guess, you know, that's your whole thing. And I have a kind of, it's a smaller theory, okay? I have, <laughs> my personal theory is, do you know the troll, the Fuzzbert? It's like this troll, yes. with the, okay, neon green hair, it has the feet you can't see its face so in trolls one there is uh the you know there's a reference to the original trolls when they're you know making their escape from the troll tree on trollstice the original trolls they like fall out of the tree and it is like so goofy um but like i feel like fuzzbert is Loki like, he's like a subtle reference to the original trolls. Like that's what I saw Fuzzbert at, as. And I don't know much about like what goes on in the animated series because I did look into it and like Fuzzbert is a specific species of trolls, like the Fuzzlings. Yes. And yes. I haven't watched that because I was, one of my points was like, Fuzzbert has like the skin tone, you know, same color palette. But in the animated series, they like expand upon it. There's like a bunch of different colors. So it's like not very relevant. <laughs> so. I have a very uh, unique perspective on this because I don't know a lot about the toy line, but I watched the entire series. So, like, the the only thing I know about the toy line is the uh, giraffe Cooper. At first, I was so confused when I was watching the movies, and then I realized, wait a minute, that, like, scary giraffe I saw when I was, like, looking on eBay. <laughs> That's why they did that, and that makes so much sense. But in terms of a uh, Fuzzbert, I, I'm unsure about the toy thing. I don't doubt it. I, I don't know enough about the toys. In the series, they have a very strange approach to his character where he's like this mythical creature. Like there's this one scene where Branch falls inside Fuzzbert's hair and there's multiple Fuzzberts and they're like speaking in bleeps and bloops. Uh? He's like a robot. Oh. He's I was not expecting that. I went off the deep end in my video a little bit about him because I was like, oh, he's he's a totally different being. Yeah, I did not watch your video on purpose because I was like, this, yeah. it's kind of like too perfect for me not, not, for this not to be our collab. Like I have to. And also like, I was going to ask you your thoughts. And also, no, this is not like, I bought a troll off eBay and this was before I watched the movies and you know, without this outfit, it's literally fuzz burnt. Yeah, so it's kind of funny that like, I, I took notice of that. I didn't do that on purpose. I do want to look into the series like on my own own time now because like i actually liked trolls more than i thought i would have liked it the series is truly unhinged it's a totally different vibe from the movies i still enjoy it but i i have to force myself into into thinking of them as separate canons which people have also told me that is the case because i do enjoy the the shows as well but i think that they made Poppy like a little bit of a jerk, which I was just like not ready for. Editing Lula here, um, I have some thoughts. 
So I watched the first half, I didn't finish it, um, of The Imposter, which is the episode where that scene comes from that Athena was talking about with Fuzzbert. Because I was looking for the scene, but I was like, I want to see, I want to see the vibe. I want to see what it's like. And within maybe a minute into the episode after the intro, um, Poppy just had this like total personality shift is what I noticed. And it caught me so off guard. I was like, who is this? <laughs> this is not <laughs> how she acted in a movie. Of course, take that with a grain of salt because this is with me watching less than five minutes of an episode. But I did think it was interesting that it like, it stuck out to me immediately. Yeah, and I was, I was just so flabbergasted. I'm like, why are you doing my girl like this? I hate when like, you, you, you know, you like a character and they take like some drastic turn like that. It's like the um, immediate thing that comes to my mind was Joan in season two of Clone Eye. I mm -hmm. don't even get me started. I was so distraught over what they did to her in that finale. I was yeah. like, what is she doing? She fell off the deep end. Season three was better, but it also was like, I don't know what they're going to do with season four. And that's what's stressing me out. It's stressful to think about. I wasn't even that excited for season three at first. And then I started watching it and I was like, this is good. Yeah, yeah, I was so surprised. And the whole fucking skunky poo thing was disgusting. I'm like the, I'm sorry, I'm like the opposite. I really like skunky poo. Initially, when I saw the trailer, I was like, that's the only thing I'm looking forward to, which is it's crazy to say out loud. I just didn't enjoy watching skunky worth fucking skunky poo. I did not enjoy that part. I was so traumatized, like, I did not expect it to go that way. Me and my fiance were just like, no, oh, oh, oh god, no. Oh. Like, I didn't think they were gonna show that. No, I didn't need a visual. Yeah, that was disturbing. So in your video, you talk a lot about, obviously, trolls, and then you talk about the trolls with a Z. I feel like I always have to pronounce the Z, because otherwise it just sounds like I'm saying trolls and trolls, but they're like, drastically different but in my video well it's not i talk about all the eras but i did focus a lot on the like original troll dolls so because i knew we were going to talk about dreamworks i looked into the media of the original trolls because i was just curious and the first thing i watched it was like this 22 minute like vhs tape on youtube um called magic trolls and warriors I'm so scared. And like red flag number one, it they don't resemble the trolls at all. I was like, what is this? Cause like, it was just like very limited information. So I just was like, okay, I'll look this up and watch it. And then I, you know, I only continued to watch it and finish the whole thing because there's this like, there's a princess and then there's this guy named, I think his name is Spen. And he, I could you not, I was like convinced that he was voiced by whoever voices Cat Noir from Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> Cecilia? Oh, who are you? My name is Sven. I hear your sad singing every day when I work in the mines. Uh, don't misunderstand. Your singing is beautiful. But I just wish you'd sing happy songs. I could not stop laughing. And then I went down this rabbit hole of like actually trying to figure it out. But there's like no information on like this media. Like it was so hard to find like the voice acting cast. And the guy that it said it was miraculous ladybug like showed up on his like thing but i couldn't really find a lot of info still and i was like i don't know if it's actually him because like it's a slippery slope of like is is google even being accurate right now because there's just no information however after i watched the whole thing only then did i find out that it was not affiliated with like trolls at all it was like a copycat what do you know anything about the copyright situation with trolls okay so i don't know about that one the the vhs i was planning on uh eventually Actually getting to a part two because there's so much trolls media and so much uh people like trying to ride the the back of trolls there's one that's like stone protectors and i'm not sure if that's the one that looks like one of them literally looks like um like a crossover of teenage mutant ninja turtles and trolls what it's like, it's like the most bizarre thing it's like these buff guys is that the one where they're in san francisco <laughs> Sure, unclear. I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay, because I, I was going to tell you, there's this one that was um, produced by the same people who produced the, like, Trolls with a Z. And it's called Super Trolls. It's very charming, but it's also, like, the most random thing ever. But apparently it's, like, really rare. Like, I could only find clips of it on YouTube. And then the second, it was, like, cut into two pieces. And the second clip was, like, someone recording it and there's background noise. So I didn't watch the whole thing because it was, like, I, I can't. It's, like, the Trolls and they're in San Francisco, and they get powers, and then they go around destroying the city while being chased by this specific 
like cop and it's just so unhinged oh i gotta check it out because i have like a little list i think hopefully on my phone because i was starting to look at other trolls media because like i'm glad that for my video i just focused on trolls and trolls oh yeah it's it's a lot <laughs> that alone was a lot but in terms of the copyright situation, so Trolls with a Z did get permission, obviously, from like the Trolls toy brand, but the Trolls toy company ended up getting sued by uh, DIC Entertainment, Trolls with a Z's company, because they were like, you told us that you were going to get rid of like counterfeit dolls on the market and then they countersued the toy doll company countersued dic entertainment they tried to like flip it and like blame you know uh the damn company for like the failure of trolls and then they were like um no actually you misrepresented yourself because we had other people offering us and you said you were the best fit it was so stupid i'm like why would you you could have not made like a more dumb choice in that situation and i am beefing with both of them because here's the thing i love Trolls with a Z. I fucking love Trolls with a Z. I think it's so iconic. I think it's so stupid in the best way. And also, like, if we're being honest, like, even DreamWorks Trolls isn't, like, it's not the original toy. Both of those medias, they don't cover the little wrinkly old men. They don't. Neither of them do. <laughs> no, they don't. There's no ref. I mean, okay, I didn't watch Trolls with a Z. Um, I just looked into kind of like, there's like a lost media thing, kind of. It's very good. It like gives off the similar vibes of Bratz. I'm sure people can tell just by like looking at them. It's absurd. It's so funny. I highly recommend it. I love I the character designs of the, of the girls. Like, even though I didn't watch it and I just looked into like, uh, how there's there were movie versions and not all of them come out some of them are lost only one of the ones that uh well there's one that's partially found in like dutch and then the only ones that are found are like the ones that actually released but it, you know there's like extra footage so it is like really interesting to think about i uh I, I looked into the lost media of that a little bit and it was uh i think it was mostly in other languages because um the movies are like you said just like the episodes put together so all of those individual episodes at least in english are found so i was able to watch the the whole series and it still felt incomplete i was like i wanted a season two so badly yeah because it's so short it's only like badly. one season i will say the dolls like the face of the dolls is like the i am so scared they did those girls so dirty because in the show they look really cool that like face i was like terrified when i saw it i don't know this is my little theory um i'm not sure how much validity there is to this but i feel like they were just trying to force another doll design that they had into the trolls with the z like they were like oh we have all of these leftover from this other project project that we did let's just stick the hair that these girls have on them and like I said in my video I, you know they were made by Hasbro and that did not shock me at all because my first thought was like those Equestria girl dolls where like they're so cheaply made honestly it all made sense <laughs> as soon as I found that out but another thing about that like uh trolls super trolls show that okay they're being chased by this police lady and I specifically wrote this down she is driving this car she's chasing them and she loses them and then she goes like flying into this warehouse realistically this crash could like should have killed her but then all she says is oh lucky for me I always obey the law and wear my seatbelt psychic senses are picking up evil robots get ahead hang on <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, lucky for me, I always obey the law and wear my seatbelt. <laughs> like, after she just, like, she doesn't say anything else after that just happened. Like, she was flying through the air. That's all she has to say. Weird PSA. Like, weird time for a little lecture. And then after, she's like, she goes in the warehouse and there's another troll. And then she's like, what? you guys are everywhere. And then, like, the floor, like, cracks and she's, like, almost falling into lava. Uh? What do you want? Not another troll! You mean you've seen other trolls? The city's infested with them. Officer McCannon, San Francisco Police. You're all under arrest for <laughs> being disgusting in public. I could not keep up. <laughs> this is like, it was such a fun time, but still. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to watch this. Once I once I put out my video, I was made aware of every other piece of trolls media so i am very excited to eventually get back into that we'll jump on a call again <laughs> we'll unpack everything yeah like 
even though that like VHS tape I was talking about is not original, the weirdest thing is like when I was like looking into it to try to find it, I there were so many people that were like, oh my gosh, like this was my childhood. I remember this. <laughs> Hi, it's me interjecting this uh, segment of the video. I, this is me after our Zoom call. I'm so mad at myself because I forgot to bring up like, to me, the most charming piece of unofficial trolls media which is Trolley's radio sing-along. It has these like puppet versions of the troll dolls and they sing songs and they do musical segments. And I was watching it at first and I was like, this is so like fucking adorable. And then I find out after the fact that like, oh, <laughs> this is not official either. I mean, I should have known that Trolley is spelled like troll i-e-s so obviously that was whoever made this um their way of trying to get around it even though you know troll dolls were public domain at this point but yeah um absolutely broke my heart this would have been right up athena's alley i'm like so mad at myself right now <laughs> And it's so weird. It's because that's how bad the copyright situation was. Damn company with, with like the original troll dolls, they obtained copyright for the trolls in the US because they're originally um, from Denmark um, in 1965. But then it was like quickly like invalidated since they sold trolls in the US without the like proper copyright notice. So then they became public domain, which is just crazy. Billions and billions of dollars were actually made off all these copycat trolls and they were just allowed to do this. And Dan mm -hmm. wouldn't even get the copyright issue fixed until 2003. And that's why they were like, um, when they countersued, they were like, you made us lose out even more on those billions of dollars that we already lost. Like you just made this so much harder for us to get those profits. <laughs> Such bitterness. Cause it's also like, okay, you guys messed up with the copyright. Cause now that I know this, I'm almost like, okay, like DIC should not have sued them. They were never going to win that. But I see what their angle was. Because when I was originally reading about this, I didn't have the context that there was this like legal battle going on for the copyright of trolls. I had no idea that that was happening. It's crazy. Cause I was like looking at, you know, trolls online to buy one. Cause I didn't need to buy one. It was an impulsive purchase. Cause I'm like, now I need one. Now that I've looked into this, like I, it might be my new thing. Um, and I saw all these brands coming up and I'm like, this is not, this is not a troll. Like, what is this? And the, you know, still the name Rust kept coming up, which is actually who distributed trolls in the US. So those are real trolls. But at first I was like, even confused by that. They come up under so many names when I was researching like Trolls Co or like Damn Things or even like Rust Trolls. Cause that's, you know, the distributor. But yeah, it's like so weird that they don't have like one straightforward name. Cause I was like, do I call them all different names or do I just stick to one, which is ultimately what I did. And the Rust thing really surprises me because, oh my God, you said Rust and I was like, because oh, they did uh, Shining Stars, that Webkin's like- I never got thing. into that, but I know that you are obsessed with it. And honestly, obsessed. I feel like if I would have gotten into it or like if I, me as a kid would have loved that. Like the, isn't it like, it don't so you get a star? Real. Yes. So Rust though, so they're fascinating. I'm, I gotta look into that too now because Rust had so many different things. And if it's the Rust I'm thinking of, which it probably is, R-U-S-S, -S, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two drastically different things. They also had another like Webkin spinoff type of thing that was um like only for fish. But anyway, they had so many different products and I think it was defunct. Like, I don't think Russ is around anymore. And I was like, with just how many properties they owned, I'm like, how did they go under? They owned trolls for a little bit. How did they go under? It's always strange to like, DIC, they also went under like right after the whole thing with trolls. And that that's like a mm -hmm. big contributor. But it's like, they have so much media. It's also weird to think about that. Yeah. Is trolls a curse? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Dream DreamWorks is doing well. Because yeah, it's no. Really, really great. It's also weird when I was looking into like DreamWorks getting, you know, the licensing for it. Cause originally they were just going to get the licensing, but then they bought the, the IP, which honestly, like, I'm glad they did. Cause they, they've done it justice. And like, now it's can, like, it can live on to like a new generation. They finally found like a home after like jumping around for so long. There's two sides to me right now. Cause I still desperately want Trolls with a Z to come back. I didn't realize that DreamWorks had the entire IP. That's probably never going to happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> DreamWorks owns Trolls completely, except for in uh, Scandinavia, because that's where the uh, the creator of Trolls was born. No, that, that's just not correct. Thomas Dam was actually born in Joel, where we started our story in this video, but the Trolls are based upon Scandinavian folklore. So that's why 
the IP is still actually owned in Scandinavia. I'm going to take a trip there and be like, can I pitch you something? Yeah, like, hear me out, guys. <laughs> Everyone loves Trolls of the Z, too. It's just not... There's no way there'd ever be a crossover because it's just totally different creatures. No, I know, because I was even, like, um, you know, just looking at them. Trolls with a Z is, like, so drastically different. It's like they're not, I mean, they are trolls, but, like, looking at them, they look more like humans. So it's this weird, yeah. like... It's very bizarre. And also, like, they, except for, like, in comparison to other, like, mythological creatures in the trolls uh, world with a Z... They're like, they're also supposed to be like normal size. And then obviously trolls and DreamWorks are so tiny. I did want to hear your theory, like, um, or like a, a quick synopsis of your theory because I have no idea. So a lot of my theory uh, hinges on the TV show. There's some like weird connections. So one of them is there's a character in Kaboom in the TV show and there's a character named Kaboom in Trolls with a Z. The Kaboom character in Trolls with a Z is used as a lab rat to the girls. They're they, like, like actually, they're like, oh, we need to practice our spells. Let's, let's throw our spells at, at this guy. That's um, crazy. He's just like, whatever. I, I'm not into it, but he's going along with the flow, whatever. And then Kaboom in the Trolls, DreamWorks Trolls show is like ran away from his family. He says, I didn't always like used to be like this, all these things. So I was like, okay. I person. see it. Like, yeah. In person easily. Yeah. Like he has this like, like mysterious backstory that we don't know about. Yeah. One of them like had the green hair and the trolls, but then in the, uh, in Trolls with an S, his, like, skin was green. I was like, oh, something went wrong with the spells. This guy transformed, ran yeah, to Yeah, like, suffering, universe. like, uh, the side effects of, like, a spell gone wrong. So then the other half of it is Trolls, the TV show with an S, DreamWorks. They had a lot of, like, um, multiverse shit. I always, like, like love that. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's also, like, it's such a great way to, like, expand on writing. And if anything cancels each other out, you're like... Multiverse. I had a theory, because also at the end of Trolls of the Z, spoiler alert, there was this volcano that was attached to the girls fighting. Like, it would erupt when the trolls with the Z fought. And I'm like, they never fucking stop fighting. This is the end of the world. The volcano explodes. I, I hate to say it, they all die. Trolls with the Z, they all die. Their magic goes into the earth, and then that's how Trolls with an S came to be years later. Evolution. That is so <laughs> smart. Wait. I, I, immediately when you said the thing about the volcano, my mind went to like Total Drama World Tour when they all run away from the volcano. I was picturing it. And then there's also like these other creatures. I'll send you a picture. There's a creature that we see in Trolls with a Z. One of the Trolls with a Z girls hits this creature with an iconic... Yeah, I, I just gotta be honest with you. You are ugly. So that creature looks exactly like the Bergens. I think those creatures turned into the Bergens. I feel yeah, like, I okay, it. is Trolls with a Z, like, just really out of pocket? Because that's the vibe I got from it. I mean, it, it's a 2000 cartoon, so, like, that should already be kind of... Yes, and especially, like, early 2000s is already so unfiltered, like, don't give a fuck energy. And then you pair that with when they market specifically for girls for whatever reason. Yeah, that theme so song savage. is crazy. Like, I would, okay, first I was like, this is really catchy. Like, in my, I feel like every video that I talk about a theme song, I have, like, the same line of, like, this is so good, guys. And then, like, I, like, dance to it for some reason. Because, <laughs> like, I, you know, one thing about me, I love a good theme song. But then I, like, started, like, listening to the words. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is this? It's a pink thing. Yeah, I'm like, it's a tech teen fantasy. Yeah, like, it feels like they just, like, they, it, it honestly sounds AI generated a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know it's no, not, but... I did, like, a little bit of, like, um, like, a pitch room full of men being like, what, what, what a girl's like. Uh, uh. <gasps> Yo, someone start writing this shit down! That's so funny. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so, like, when you watch the theme song, you can't help but think that. And especially when I watched the full series, they mentioned laptops specifically in the theme song. And I watched the whole series, I'm like... They were on a laptop once. <laughs> this person made the theme song based on the first episode and that's it. Or like, do, how often do they, do they use their spell phones? Oh, actually those they use a lot because oh, that's okay. how they send spells to people that are not right next to them. And that's oh. why one of the, the main boy characters is bald for the whole series. Oh. They're like, huh? gonna make him bald and like spells only last a little bit but that guy actually liked being bald it was just weird this show was so strange <laughs> you no know, like out of context that's wild 
<laughs> yeah, and in context, it's it's even more wild to be honest. Yeah, like I don't I don't know what's going on here, but now now I'm interested. I will definitely watch it again. Like I just I adored it. Thank you, Athena P, for coming on the channel, being here today. Oh my gosh! Well, we got to watch Trolls with a Z together. I'm so happy to be here revisiting Trolls. Uh, I fear we've only scratched the surface with this one, so I I think that you'll see this duo again. Truly. <laughs> Truly. It goes so much farther than this. Like, I don't think I'm even doing it justice. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see this video. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. This video was so much fun, and I'm so glad I was able to bring Athena on. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on trolls, any of the eras. You know, no territory is left out here. And bringing up the eras, what was your favorite era of trolls? Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in my next video.